Now to work with the sleeves. First, let's write the armhole measurements down. The front armhole measurement is 7 and 7 eighths inches. The back armhole measurement is 8 and 3 sixteenths measurements. Measuring the two together, in other words, the complete armhole measurement without seam allowance, I'm rounding this up to 16 inches and 1 eighth. Just make it much easier than a 16th of an inch. And I'm dividing it by three. I'm folding the measuring tape into three equal sections to find out what 1 third of 16 and an eighth is. It comes two. five and a quarter inches. I'm going to say five and a half. This is going to be the height of my cap. We will be learning many sleeves. And a sleeve is quite an art, making a sleeve. But basically, you're taking the entire armhole measurement and dividing it by three. Um, one, five and a half inches is much easier to work with than five and a quarter. I'm drawing a straight line across the top. That will be the shoulder line, the very height top of the sleeve, the very top. And I'm coming down that five and a half inches and drawing a line. This is going to be the cap height. I'm making a mark that will be where the shoulder seam comes. And I'm writing to the right front. Front armhole measurement. And to the left, back armhole measurement. And that is the shoulder line. And this is the bicep line. Seven and seven eighths inches is the front armhole measurement, and eight and three sixteenths is the back, although we rounded that up a fraction. So I put zero of my ruler at the top line and found the measurement, seven and seven eighths, and I landed that seven and seven eighths on the bottom line. Draw with the ruler that measurement. Now, for the back armhole measurement, do the same. Start at zero at the shoulder line, find your measurement, eight and three sixteenths, or eight and a quarter, 
and draw that measurement down to meet the bottom line. This measurement is what goes around the bicep. I'm finding the middle of that line, mid distance, and come down one inch and make a mark. Then make a line perpendicular. This will eventually be a notch, but it's also where the curve of the upper arm changes to the underarm. Do the same for the back. Find the middle of that line. Dot it lightly, then come down one inch and make a mark. And because this is the back, we're going to have two notches, so come down another half inch and make another mark. So you'll have two notches in the back of the armhole of the body and two notches in the back of the sleeve pattern. Now find a nice place to curve from the shoulder to the first notch and another curve from that little red dot that I made at the one inch below the mid point of that line and that is the underarm curve. You might want to watch this part of the video several times to really understand what I'm doing. Now flip your curve create from the shoulder to the second notch down a nice curve and then another curve to the baseline. And now that starts to look like the cap of a sleeve. At the upper curve you want to make sure that there's quite a bit of width because that goes around the bicep. So I'm measuring this whole new curved line, not the straight line, the curved line. Because when you actually make that curve, the measurement grows, and that is the ease that you will use at the cap. So I have an additional 5 eighths of an inch for easing into that sleeve. Now I'm going to measure from the underarm in the back up to the shoulder notch, right there. Note what it is. I've put a notch, a little dot where the armhole measurement is to measure the distance. And that distance between the first dot and the top shoulder dart is my ease. So I have one half of an inch extra in the back, five eighths in the front. Hmm. I'm just going to split the difference and move my shoulder notch over a fraction. And also move the underarm in just a fraction. And now basically I will have about half an inch on either side of the shoulder notch for ease. I'm measuring the bicep and I'm also measuring the cap height. If you find the middle of the bicep and draw a line from that midpoint straight up, that will be your grain line. The grain line is not necessarily where the top notch is. So again, this is 11 and 3 quarters just about, find the middle point, missed that one just a little bit, so that's where the middle is. That will be your grain line, and it's perpendicular to the bicep line. So that's my grain line, and if you notice, it does not match the shoulder notch. It's usually a little behind the shoulder notch. LGL means length grain line. Now, this is more of a cap sleeve. I want to create a hem. Hmm, but now I'm thinking. I want 
the sleeve to be a little narrower at the bottom of the sleeve than the bicep. So I'm pulling it in a fraction, approximately one half inch from the bicep line. And now I want to create a curve, just a slight curve. So at the middle grain line, I've come up about an inch and a quarter, and I'm going to connect that with my curved ruler to the underarm. I like this shape. It's a little tiny bit shorter than the straight line. So what I'm doing is folding the two underarm lines together pinning across the cross grain creating my seam allowance front and back of the sleeve together so that they're exactly the same. And a half inch or five eighths up the side or the underarm seam. That should be five eighths. Which will allow me to make a French seam like the body. or three quarters. Half an inch around the armhole area, the cap, the underarm and the cap, this is the same seam allowance as the body has. Watch how I flip the rulers again to get the curve to do what I want it to do. Just cleaning up the pattern a little bit. Cutting the underarm right there together so they're the exact same length, but keeping in mind that the front and back curves are different. The front underarm curve is a little scoopier than the back. The back is a little shallower. And across the cap, about three inches down, that has to reach around the bicep area. So make sure that it stays nice and wide. Of course, this will be tested.
So I have created 3 eighths of an inch E's total. When I shaved a little bit off at the hemline while drafting this, that created 3 eighths of an inch instead of half. And that's perfect for this type of blouse and this type of fabric. It's a lightweight cotton that we'll be using. Now I have my shoulder notch. I'm writing the armhole measurements onto the sleeve front and back as a reference for later. And now what I want to do is measure from the underarm, not the seam allowance, from the underarm seam up to that notch. I'm writing what that measurement is in the seam allowance. And now I need to create a matching notch on the body. That little dot will be a notch. And I'm going to show you how to make a perfect notch. I'm going to balance the one half inch seam of the garment with the one half inch of the measuring tool. And that is a right angle. That notch is a right angle to the seam line. We'll go over this countless times. So again, measuring from the underarm to the dot that will be extended into the seam allowance to become a notch then measuring from the body's underarm seam the same amount up that curve, making a slight dot and extending it with my ruler. Again, the half inch, see, I, that would be imbalanced, that would be imbalanced, but this creates a right angle in the seam allowance. And we'll do the same thing for the back. We've already got our two little dots. Measuring from the underarm, excluding seam allowance to the first dot. And whatever that is, I write it down, plus the half inch for the second dot. Creating a notch, a right angle to the seam line, and one half inch away is the second notch. Whatever that measurement is, I will find on the back armhole of the body. So this side is more carefully marked. Starting with zero, going up the seam, finding the measurement, and half an inch away from that. Those are my two dots that will be notches. And then a right angle balancing that ruler a right angle perpendicular to the seam line and then a half inch away is the second notch. And then just transferring those to the other side.
And I'm just walking this around to kind of show you how this is going to fit. I actually made the seam allowance under the arm of the sleeve less than the body. And that's because I'm going to be making a facing for the sleeve. So it doesn't really need to be the same amount of seam allowance under the arm of the sleeve as the body. So now we have all of the pieces for this lovely little blouse. So to make the facing for the sleeve, Taking a scrap of paper, folding it, pinning it to stabilize, folding or placing the sleeve along that fold and I'm placing the red line, which is the center of the sleeve, along the fold, because both sides of the sleeve at the hem are exactly the same. Trace off the underarm and curve lines, and these I will cut Now determining the width or the height I want it to be, I'm going to make it one and a quarter, one and an eighth to a quarter inches tall. That way it does not interfere with the underarm seam allowance of the sleeve. It is below that. So it's not going to cause bulk. The fold is also the grain line, so I'm going to fill that in. Center, grain line, not center. And a cross grain perpendicular to the length grain. And label it sleeve facing for him. And I'm dotting in the seam allowance along the bottom. The top of this piece does not have seam allowance added to it. Filling in the underarm seam allowances. Notches.
And now we have all the pieces for the blouse. Front, back, upper collar, under collar, sleeve, and sleeve facing. <laughs> 